So in this video, we're going to talk about the process of releasing shame from your system, and that's going to be the meditation focus of the last video in this series. First, I want to give you an example of how shame gets taken on in the first place. When my daughter was seven, she was in grade two here in Canada, uh, I was the parent helper in the class. And one day it was the morning class and there was a fairly young, newish teacher, I think, who wasn't that skilled at managing 37 year olds. It was show and tell. So I'm sitting at the back of the class and I'm looking at the kids at the front and they're all getting together on the mat and there's a little boy who's got a toy with him, it's a little robot. And when you uh, press a certain button, a little tune plays and the robot starts to spin. So he was showing this toy to his friend while everyone was coming around the mat. And his friend looked at it, he was very impressed. And then the boy pushed the button and the music came and the thing started spinning and his friend started doing a little dance and then the kids started doing a little dance and the two of them were in their own world, these two seven-year-old boys just having a great time doing that little dance. But what they didn't know, and what I could see from the back of the class, was that the teacher was standing like this. staring at them. Gradually, all the little kids realized what was going on. They sat down very quietly. They wanted to be good kids, they were good kids. So the teacher was kind of angry. And so it ended up just everyone sitting on the mat and these two boys lost in their own world with the toy kind of da dancing a little bit. And then the teacher said, and we will just wait until those children that do not know how to control themselves learn how to control themselves. The boy's friend saw this immediately and sat down really, really fast. The boy with the toy who was really into the game, didn't quite know what was happening, saw his friend disappear and then heard the teacher's voice a little later, by which time he was standing there by himself, his friend had gone, the other kids were pointing at him and laughing, so he was publicly humiliated, you know, a little bit of giggling, and the teacher uh, was shaming him. So in that moment, I saw his confusion, his bewilderment, his discomfort, and then very quickly, a part of him kind of took on this wry grin. Right? Let's make it funny. Let's make it, I'm one of those kids that does this, because that's a lot safer than the feelings of, I'm a bad kid, I don't know how to be with other kids, I don't know how to be with the teacher, I'm not okay. So that I'm not okay, the part of him that absorbed that gets pushed into a corner of the psyche. One of his protectors is this guy who will probably minimize other people's shame, probably minimize his own in the future, probably, you know, make it okay. It's kind of funny to be a rebel because it's protective and it's protective of the part that just feels really, really bad. So as that kid grows up, if he applies for the team, if he applies for a job, if his partner decides to leave him, um, each of those incidents and many others will provide the opportunity for this part that feels like it's not worth much to be able to get his attention. But he doesn't know how to attend to it, so his protectors instead will push it back or he'll find ways to distract himself or he'll minimize or whatever he's gonna do. And that's just the mechanism, that's what we do. But that's how shame can be brought on it's a burden held by a part that gets pushed to a corner of the psyche. It wants to release that burden and it will keep getting our attention to the extent that it can feel like this is who I really am underneath everything. This is who I am as opposed to this is who I am. This is a part of me that took on the burden of this belief about itself in response to external events. This is what we call low self-esteem. Right? When a part that feels shame repeatedly gets triggered. So what I'll be inviting you to do is to go into your own system in the next uh, video in the meditation and to get to know the part of you that's holding the shame and to be able to facilitate its release. Now the internal system of the personality is a little complex and there's lots of protective parts in there. And if you're going to get to know a part of you that holds the shame, we call that witnessing then it's going to be important that you can hold as much of your compassion and curiosity as possible. And if you think about it, that example I just gave you, it's not hard to find compassion, right? That poor kid just playing with his friend, just wanting to have a good time in his own world, oblivious to the teacher. 
And then out of nowhere, as far as he's concerned, this shaming response to him, right? It's not hard. It wasn't hard for me to sit at the back of the class and go, oh, oh, that's so hard for you. I'm so sorry that just happened. So that compassion's available to you. You can easily bring it to an external circumstance. It can be challenging sometimes to bring it internally because there are parts of us that believe we don't have worth, because there are parts of us that may believe we don't have compassion. And because there are protective parts of us, if you're getting to know a vulnerable part, which we would call an exile, a part that holds the shame, then the protected parts have to know that you're there, have to know that you're consistent, and have to know that you have the capacity to witness, to hear everything that that part needs you to hear in order for it to be able to release it. So there's some specific concerns as you go into your system that you'll notice. And I'm going to name them all now so that when you're in the meditation, if they come up, you have a sense of what the part's about and you're able to stay with it. First thing I'm going to ask you to do in the meditation is to settle in and take a couple of breaths. I'll guide you through a meditation. And then you're going to be finding the part that holds the shame. So you may want to return to a time when it was last triggered, a time when you uh, felt not okay, someone criticized you, someone misinterpreted you, someone told you you were bad, actively shamed you. Or you may notice it in terms of a compensating part, a part that's uh, the people pleaser, or the part that um, uh, has to go to the gym all the time because it's connected to a part that has body shame issues. Or you might notice it last time you ate or cut or had to drink or uh, use drugs or whatever, parts of you might have done to distract from the part holding shame. You could come to one of those moments and that's another part that's going to connect you to the part holding the shame. By the way, there's no moralism here. Drinking, drugging, gambling, sleeping, gym, whatever you do is whatever you do. If the behavior is compelled, if you have to do that, and the part of you that has to do that would rather have choice or rather have a break sometimes, that's when you know that it's being compelled by a part holding distress. Otherwise, just an activity. So you settle in, you find the shame part, or you find the parts connected to it, and you ask permission. So if you are coming in to get to a part that holds shame and you hear, I don't have any shame, then you can ask the part of you that holds that, that says that, makes that statement, if it would be okay for it to just soften back so that you can get to know the part that has picked up the belief or the feeling, or the body experience that's connected to not being okay somehow. You want to check how you're feeling as you're going in towards the part of you that's holding the shame and towards the parts of you that are protected. Of it. If you can recognize that each part of you has a positive intent, then it's easy to hold that part in appreciation, even if other parts do not like it. So let's say you have a minimizing part saying, oh, there's no shame in our system, we don't need to go there. Uh, and another part gets mad at that, just get out of the way and let me do my work. You need to <laughs> listen to the one that's getting mad and acknowledge it ask it to soften back, so you can come back to the one that says, oh, we don't have any shame, and ask it, how come it needs to keep repeating that line? How is it serving you by doing that? And if it did not do that, what does it imagine might happen? It's very unusual uh, in the human being to have no shame whatsoever. Just uh, in my experience, I haven't run into that. So you're getting uh, permission from the protective parts to get to know the part holding the shame. And there may be specific concerns as you're going in, right? and you may hear these. So you may notice that you can't connect to the part holding shame, or there's an active voice saying it doesn't want you to go there, or your system presents a wall or fogginess or cloudiness. Uh, these are all indicators of a part that is concerned about you making a connection, a direct connection, with the part of you holding the shame, which you want to look for in or around your body as a way of touching into it. So if you run into that, if you run into distractions or fog or confusion or uh, blocks in any way that aren't allowing you to connect to the part holding the shame, get curious about the blocks. Those are parts that will have concerns about what you're doing and the concerns need to be addressed so that the work can be safe. This work has to be safe to do and the safety of it is determined by your protective system. So if you experience fog, 
can't quite get to the part holding the shame because there's this fog there. Or there's a part saying there's no such thing as parts. Um, get curious about why those parts are doing what they're doing. And you'll find oftentimes that there's a concern that you're going to get overwhelmed. Part holding the shame may, way, may well feel overwhelmed. Uh, oh my God, I feel so dreadful. I'm unlovable. I'm unworthy. I wish I'd never been born. It can be a gut feeling. It can be a sense of, I want the world to swallow me up. It can be very, very intense. And so the protective system doesn't want you to get overwhelmed with that. It doesn't want you to get flooded with this part of shame. And that's an important consideration. So if you ask, how come you're being all foggy? How come you're not letting me connect? And you get a sense of, you're going to get overwhelmed. Thank the part for the information. Here's how we address overwhelm, or fear of overwhelm. The protected part has probably noticed when there's been overwhelm in the past and it's referencing that, it's remembering that. So let's validate that. You may have been overwhelmed with shame at some point. The part holding the shame has been trying to get your attention. As sometimes in the past, it's done it by flooding you, by bringing this intense feeling of distress. You can let it know ahead of time that you're coming in to get to know it. That you want to get to know it and it doesn't have to flood you in order for you to get to know it. In fact, if it does flood you, then it's going to bring up all your protectors and you cannot get to know it. So let it know you get that it's holding distress and you're on your way. Sometimes it's helpful so the part doesn't feel like it's being pushed away if it's got big energy to say something like, um, it's like I'm coming to you like a camera lens. If you're too close, I can't have you in focus. I can't see you. So you need to pull your energy back a little bit so I can see you and get clarity and be able to be present to you. So that's how we'll work with a part concerned about overwhelm. And you can ask the part that's concerned, let's say it's foggy or it's just a, it's a warrior, it's holding up a shield or whatever it's doing. We can ask it if it would be willing to step on the sidelines instead of blocking. And if it looks like you're going to get overwhelmed, to come in and uh, give you a break from the intensity of that part again. Maybe take a breath, ask it to pull back, come back to the part holding the intense energy, the shame. Oftentimes, protective parts are very happy to be welcomed into that role. There's another concern that the part will take over the system. It's different from flooding. It's more like you'll be stuck in the shame. So if that comes up as a concern, you can let the part holding that concern or voicing that concern, you can let it know that uh, at the end of the work, you will be uh, taken back out of your system and you will not be stuck in a part holding shame that is not what we're going to do and there are safeguards in place um, specifically the end of the meditation i'll invite you to notice the other parts of you again and to make sure that you're back in in yourself what we call self-energy sometimes there's a concern that there's insufficient self-energy that there's not enough compassion or curiosity available in your system to be able to listen to the part holding the shame. So if you get that, if you get a sense that there's a part concerned that you don't have enough self-energy, make sure that part knows who you are and how old you are. In fact, you can ask it to tell you how old you are. Sometimes uh, in the world where the parts live, if you will, uh, they don't know that you're there. They haven't known that you're there. They may think you're a six-year-old or a 10-year-old yourself. So check that, and then check to see if there's another part that could be blended with you a little bit, a part with an agenda. We've got to get in there. We've got to get this shame out of the system. If that's got that intense agenda, then there's not enough of you around. So you can ask the part with the agenda to pull back, because all the part holding the shame needs is your curiosity, your interest, your willingness to witness it, and your compassion, which is a willingness to witness without moving to change or fix simply to be present to the distress so it gets witnessed. If our parts holding shame had been witnessed at the time, if that little seven-year-old boy in my example had been witnessed, if an adult had come over, if I'd come over to him and said, hey, you know what, the teacher's a bit anxious and she's not quite sure how to take charge of everyone, and you're okay, right? You just got lost in playing with your friend, is that right? Yeah, okay, I get that. If that had happened, he wouldn't have needed to take on a part of him that he's not okay. So what we're doing in the healing and the repair is we're coming in and we're witnessing the original distress with compassion. Sometimes if you're coming into a part holding shame, there's another part that's embarrassed about it, that doesn't want it to be there, that doesn't want you to go there. If you pick that up, you can let the embarrassed part know that it doesn't have to be there. You're here, 
part holding the shame is here, the part that's embarrassed about it all, you can go somewhere else in your system, to a waiting room, to a palm. Sometimes there's a concern that uh, you'll have to rewrite your whole story, right? Let's say there was a part of you that was shamed by mom and dad, or shamed by mom and mom, or whoever was shamed by caregivers. And you've made it okay, you've got past made all that okay. Right? Well, they, you know, of course they hit me, but then, you know, they're Scottish, that's the history of the Scots. I'm using that because I'm Scots, right? history of Scots, heritage. Um, what if it's not okay? What if uh, suddenly my perfect childhood was less than perfect? What if my parents who did the very best for me, which they did, at times got angry, at times would shame me? What does that mean about my childhood? And all it means is that you've got more information and more clarity about the dominant narrative, what's true for you, and what's probably true for you is you did have a good childhood, your parents did love you, and when parts of them got triggered that would shame you, parts of you had to respond to that. So both can be true. And we're healing those parts that are in response to being shamed, but that's all. You're not redefining uh, your life experience or indeed your childhood. And with additional information, it may be that you revisit your childhood with a different lens. Sometimes there's a concern about needing to engage with others differently. Well, if I've always been a people pleaser and people really like me because I'm a people pleaser and I stop people pleasing, well then, uh, what, what, if, what am I going to do? So there's no requirement that you engage with other people differently. This is internal work. And that said, it's possible once the shame is cleared, if the compulsive people pleaser would like to relax, it may choose to, but only if it wants to. There's no requirement that you change anything about its role. And then throughout, as you're getting to know the part holding the shame and the protectors around it, uh, you want to check that you're still feeling the compassion, the curiosity, the desire, the interest to get to know the part in the distress. If you come to it, that's great. I'm gonna invite you to listen to its story. If you don't, that's fine. And you've got to know your protective system really well. You can revisit the meditation anytime. If you do come to a part holding shame, and if it's showing you little glimpses of being in the classroom when it's seven years old, but stay with it. Thank it for the information it's giving you. And you keep asking, what else? What else do you need me to know? Different systems present in different ways. You may have you know, little kids showing you very clearly what's going on in the classroom. You may have a sense of a part. You may have a voice in your head. You may have a body sensation, all of which is welcome. If you're not clear on what the part's presenting to you from the way it's presenting, let it know you're not clear, ask it to present in a way that helps you to understand. This is the witnessing and it's absolutely crucial, right? So you let this part know that you're there, you let it know you're the adult, you let it know that you get that it's been holding distress for you and that you're available now to hear it. What does it need you to know? As it gives you information about the shame it's holding, uh, there may be other parts that come up that react to it, so that's fine. Then you ask them to soften back, you come back to your compassion. What else do you need me to know? What else? What else? What else do you need me to know? At some point, you may sense that the parts let you know everything. Sometimes another part will say, that's it, that's everything, check with that one, right? So that's a manager part trying to do something different with its own agenda. Come back to the one holding the shame, make sure it knows you're there. Is there anything else it needs you to know? Sometimes you wanna get a part out of the distressing place it's in. Let's say it's a part that's shamed, it's been sent to its room, it's, um, it's crying, it's fearful. Uh, the adults that are around it are screaming outside, they're throwing things, there's violence. We wanna get that part out of there if it would like to be so we can let it know, hey, would you like to come somewhere else so you can tell me all about what's been happening? Um, that's what we call retrieval. That's available if your partner would like to do that. Again, I'll guide you through these options. Once the part holding the shame has told you everything, there's no more for it to let you know. Ask it, do you feel like I get it? Do you feel like I get you in the way you need me to? Do you feel like I get what you've been holding? If you get a no, it's fine. Check to see if there's a part not allowing you to hear it fully, which is fine. Then you just ask it to pull back or you ask it what its concern is so that you can fully hear the shame. 
or you may have a part with an agenda. You know, I followed all the directions. How come you're not, you're not getting out of there? So you want to get that one back if that's blended with you, if it's taking up some of the space here. Is there any more? No. Okay. Do you feel like I get you in the way you need me to? Yes. Okay, good. Then the partner no longer needs to hold the distress. They can release it. And what I'll guide you to offering it is, uh, how would you like to release that? that shame, what would you like to release it to? Commonly, one of the four elements, earth, fire, air, water, or light. But the part gets to release all of that shame, all of that distress, all of the feelings, thoughts, beliefs, um, body sensations, in such a way that they're never gonna come back to it. And these parts, often the young ones are very creative, so I've had kid parts send them in a rocket ship to the sun or bury them in the sea or send them over the horizon, it doesn't matter. Whatever way it needs to go is good. What's important is that it's not gonna come back. And then you ask the part, has it released everything? Yes, ask it to check its body. Does it feel clear? Or does it feel like there's still something there that does not belong to it? If it's clear, then it's released everything. And we'll invite it to take into that space what it needs. What qualities would it like to take in? Now that it's made space from holding all of that shame energy, and quite often a part will take in what it needs. There's often confidence, a sense of being worthy, a sense of being loved and lovable. Just stay with it until it's taken all that in. And now it's no longer stuck in the role in your system of being the kid part holding all the shame. So how would it like to be in relation to you? Where would it like to settle? It could age, it could become an adult, it could go and have adventures. There's all sorts of possibilities. Once that part is settled, might become embodied, might tuck itself into your heart. Um, let it know you're gonna come back and visit it. And it's important that you check on it each day for about 21 days. If there's a reason you cannot do that, or there's a part concerned about doing that, then negotiate that. Because you just wanna keep checking in. Are you okay? You're still good? After about three weeks, it's settled in the new configuration. Uh, you wanna make sure that uh, it's still unburdened in the unburdened state. Once you've contracted with it that you're going to meet with it, invite all the protectors that have allowed you in to get to know it, the foggy part, the blanking you out part, the distracting, dissociating part, um, the one bringing the wall, whatever they were. Thank them for allowing you to get to know this one if that happened. If that didn't happen, it's fine. You've got to know your protectors and you can always come back and do this again. Then invite the parts that have been connected to this one, perhaps people pleasers, perhaps you know, com compelled to go to the gym parts, perhaps the uh, chocolate eating parts, perhaps the drinkers, the cutters. Invite them all in to see there's been a shift. This part is no longer holding shame in your system. See how they respond. Oftentimes there's a bit of disbelief. They'll take some time to get used to the idea. Sometimes they'll want to change their role in the system. They'll want to, uh, be able to do something else or to take a rest. You know, the compulsive people pleaser can relax sometimes. If you're in a hit of grief and you need to be in that space because something significant has happened in your life, maybe you don't have to people please the person at the check, the person to check out in the grocery store or everybody else. Maybe for that particular day, you can just be a little more mellow. Maybe that's okay with the people pleaser. Nothing wrong with being a people pleaser. It's great. And all of the protected parts have developed a bunch of skills throughout your life that they can use and employ whenever they like but without feeling they have to, without the compulsion. Once the power holding shame has been unburdened, there tends to be a lot more peace in the system, a lot more of you available, a lot more of yourself available. Um, if people are critical of you and shaming towards you, you may notice that's about them. That's about their critical system and that's fine. That's what they need to do. But it doesn't need to land on you. It doesn't need to land in your system in such a way that this feels like it's true for you that there's something wrong with you. And in fact, those triggers are really helpful because they clue you into parts holding shame. Now, releasing this part that's holding shame is great. There may be others. So if you do feel shame again, don't feel like this hasn't taken or hasn't worked. It just means that there's other parts that now need your attention. Uh, particularly when parts begin to realize that it's possible to shift the shame out of the system, you may find many parts coming forward. 
There may be concerns that this isn't going to work or it's not going to take, or you may have a skeptical part up. I love skeptical parts. They keep us honest. You can thank it for its skepticism. Five possibilities if the clearing of the shame does not take. One, part has more to reveal. You just need to go back and hear more that it needs to share with you. Two, there was not sufficient self-energy, so not enough compassion, curiosity around. And so a manager part of you took the lead and tried to do the work. These parts don't need to be managed, they simply need to be heard. That's the witnessing. Um, there could be an event occurring during that three-week period in your life uh, that very closely mirrors the early shaming and that can reconfigure the shame. So within that three-week period, let's say you'd unburdened a part that was being screamed at by its father right, for being useless and worthless and terrible kid and blah, blah, blah. You've listened to it, you've heard it, you've fully witnessed it, it's unburdened all of that, the system's in that three-week period where you're checking in, then you go to work and your boss loses it on you and starts screaming and shouting and it's so close to the original burden, the burden gets taken on again. That's fine. We're just going to release it again. But that is, that can happen, rarely, but it can happen. If you don't follow up, if you don't follow up in those 21 days and you promise that you would, the part can feel like you don't really care about it after all, you don't really love it, and it feels unlovable, unworthy, and then takes on the burdens again. So the follow-up's really important if you commit to it. And there may be parts that have not been consulted about the shift in the system that have a concern. Right? Let's say that, you know, because I've been carrying this shame for so long, I always present in a way which is really meek, and whatever you want to do is fine. And, uh, no, I'll just go along with your choices. That's great. My needs don't really matter that much. Um, if that's been the way I've been in the world with those protective parts for so long, there may be a concern that I'm not going to be safe, that suddenly I'll start being arrogant or make my needs met or I won't care about other people. And that will bring really negative repercussions from other people. And then inside, I'm going to feel like a bad person again. So there may be parts concerned that without the shame to kind of keep us in check, we might get too big. That's a very important part to listen to and to hear. Okay. Thank you for listening to all this. This is in preparation for the unburdening guided meditation that I'm going to take you through. Now, there's something you need to know. When we come into a part holding shame, because the energy can be very intense, because this is a very powerful meditation, it can trigger other parts. And if we get to know a part holding shame and it's not fully released, so it's closer to the surface, the sense of, oh my God, I'm worthless, I'm a horrible, terrible human being, and it blends, so it feels like this is really true for me, instead of the part, the part is now blended with the system, so I'm a horrible, terrible person. If that part gets closer to consciousness and is um, not yet released, it can trigger the protective system. It can trigger um, firefighters that want to, remember their job is to distract from it, and the most intense firefighter is the suicidal firefighter. There's so much pain in the system that its solution to the pain is to end the system. It's not a bad part. It's desperate, right? but that can get triggered, as can other firefighters distracting from this chocolate, drugs, uh, alcohol, cutting, a um, variety of distractors. So because this is a powerful meditation, what I need you to do, if you would like to participate in this and find a way to release the shame from your system. I will need you to say that you are taking full responsibility for any choices you're making and that you're not holding me accountable. And I would recommend that you only do this if you've got access to an IFS therapist or an IFS practitioner. If suicidality is part of your story, then I would recommend you do not do this. Um, however, if you feel well supported and if you feel that this is something you'd like to explore and you're willing to take the responsibility for it, and I will send you the link to the unlisted last video in this series that will guide you through the process of releasing shame. Uh, I hope that lands well with you. I'm not trying to make things overly complicated, but I do want to ensure because this is a public forum that people are well protected. And this is a very powerful methodology and a very powerful way of clearing your system of shame, which is not yours so you can step into your life in a way that feels better, more whole, more you, okay?
I wish you well.